Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Onrar. Joining us on today's episode, Lev Yakupov, Marketing Director over at TrueConf. Welcome, Lev. Hello, Steve. Uh, thank you for having me today. Good morning. It's uh, great, uh, great to have you. So uh, uh, tell us a little bit about TrueConf. Uh, you folks have uh, always positioned yourself over the years as a provider of on-premises video conferencing capabilities. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, indeed, uh, we are in this field in video conferencing market for a pretty long time. Actually, uh, the core of our team uh, started to develop collaboration solutions 20 years ago. We since then we had our own video codec. Uh, the idea was to utilize the web cameras, which just appeared by then. It was, I, as I remember, there was a sphere uh, like a ball, webcams from Logitech, uh, quite expensive. But by that time, we got an idea that conferencing could be done from PC, from the computer. You don't need to go to the uh, conferencing room. You don't need to use very expensive uh, appliances and hardware endpoints. You can just use it as a video conferencing application. And with the years, uh, of course, uh, many features appeared. Uh, the conferencing became more popular, especially after the pandemic. But uh, we still focused on just on collaboration. And the our business is uh, quite simple. We give the people the freedom of communications. We give them the ability to have the private video conferencing. And uh, how we can do that is simply by giving them the server. We give them the solution, which can be deployed on their site, which is called on-premise installation. And they can use uh, different applications for different operating systems, including mobiles, to connect to their own server. And this way, Everything goes for the server. It usually stays inside the network of the customer, and we can absolutely sure uh, we can be absolutely sure that it is absolutely secure because no data, no bits, no bytes are leaving the network of the customer. Now you That's folks are cool. mm -hmm. now business. you folks are, are based in uh, Moscow. How is the the current geopolitical climate impacted your abilities to sell solutions into the marketplace? Well. Of course, uh, it's impacted uh, the geographical uh, distribution of our customers. Uh, we used to have, that's true, more customers from North America and Western Europe. But uh, it's actually also opened uh, a lot of new opportunities in many new regions. And we are very well uh, prepared for that. We have a very strong product. And actually, uh, through our history, we were first to do a lot of innovation stuff. For example, we did the first point-to-point -point 4K call together with Logitech. Uh, we uh, showcased that on ISE, I don't remember, many years ago. We used to deliver first stereo 3D experience for real-time video conferencing uh, together with uh, Panasonic and Samsung also many years ago. So we always trying to be on the very sharp end of the uh, latest technologies and our products uh, has a lot of good features. And actually, uh, I just uh, get some statistics. Uh, during the last two years, we shipped our products to more than 105 countries. That's a lot. That's a very nice distribution across uh, our planet. Of course, uh, we don't have as much customers from the US, for example, as we wish, because the political situation is uh, quite challenging and every day it becomes uh, even more uh, difficult. However, I hope uh, in the end everything will be resolved and uh, we are an engineering company. So yeah. we are software developers and uh, as I said, our business is to bring the customers the joy and the freedom of their communications and we will continue to do that. So no matter what. Now, uh, who are the typical customers who are going to be implementing an on-premises video conferencing solution? We have so many cloud conferencing solutions out there. Uh, uh, who's going to put their arms around and embrace uh, an on-premises type of approach? Well, well, of course, there are a lot of companies who are looking for on-prem solutions today. Maybe uh, not many of them. Uh, I, I would assume that let's assume uh, approximately three to five percent of the market are actually looking for on-prem solutions uh, while most of the customers are fine with cloud-based solutions but the uh, situation is changing 
and we are seeing that more and more customers are looking for on-prem solutions uh, because of the following reasons. I would uh, tell you that the most uh, important driver for on-prem video conferencing installations is the security concerns because uh, cloud uh, solutions, uh, they usually, for most of our customers, they are located outside of the country where the customer is located and the data centers could process the data also uh, outside of the country, which could uh, violate some uh, local regulations, recommendations, or some uh, internal security rules of the organizations, especially for organizations who are connected with the critical infrastructure facilities like nuclear plants, some uh, uh, factories, or uh, it could be uh, restricted by internal rules of the government customers. They don't really want to send any information outside of the networks. So that security driver is the uh, most important one. There is another drivers uh, available uh, for us, uh, which gives us opportunity to increase our sales. Uh, for example, there are some customers who are not able to have reliable internet connection to the cloud services. It could be, let's say, the conferencing system on a large vessel. It could be cruise ship. So they have thousands of employees. They need to have uh, trainings daily, and they have to conduct hundreds of meetings. And they're not able to use the very limited uh, network internet access through the satellite to, for, to fulfill their needs. So they could install the server on board. The same could be done not for uh, civil ships. It could also be done for Navy. And we have many customers who are running the system on the Navy in many different countries. Some other examples are even more interesting. For example, uh, we have some customers who are uh, in production of Hollywood blockbusters. And they need to have the very high quality content sharing system which is absolutely secured. They should be absolutely sure that none of the sense, none of the, the work they are doing uh, is, uh, could be leaked or accessed by third parties until the release of the uh, picture. So they use on-prem solutions for internal collaboration. And sometimes such collaboration is happening across the Atlantic. That's normal. We can deliver 4K content and video easily. And actually, it is another good point for uh, on-prem solutions because cloud solutions, they usually have to pay for the data, for the bandwidth, for the traffic. And we don't have to because we usually work inside the network of the customer. So we're not limited with the payments for the bandwidth. So we can put through the network as much as we could, as much as we can to easily reach much higher quality frame rate and resolution. Now, uh, when we look at... Uh... Uh, an on-premises solution, uh, we begin to wonder, well, what, can it really take advantage of some of the artificial intelligence capabilities becoming commonplace in the market uh, right now? Uh, uh, we typically associate AI with big cloud data processing, but uh, can we see AI as part of an on-premises solution? Absolutely. Actually, a lot of AI is located on the endpoint side. So right now we could use the virtual backgrounds and noise suppression, which is processed not on the server, it is processed on my uh, laptop, uh, or it could be a mobile device. And the same uh, could be done for translation, uh, speech recognition, and some other tasks. We would see uh, a lot of progress is done daily. And AI is here for many years. Uh, since the pandemic, we have every year better and better solutions, especially for face tracking, uh, face recognition, uh, virtual backgrounds uh, could be uh, some, it could be algorithms for beautification to improve the image uh, of the, let's say, not so good camera. And believe me, many users in video conferencing, they have a, a mediocre, uh, not really good cameras on their laptops uh, and some other computers. And algorithms and AI could significantly improve how they look. And actually, that improve their collaboration. They uh, perform better because they look better. And the same could be applied for the microphones because now today we can use, let's say, uh, not really good microphone, cheap microphone, uh, and AI uh, will uh, remove the noise. AI will remove the echo and it will make the sound as clear as it's possible. This is something which requires very expensive speaker phones or headset. Uh, at least two years ago. Today, you can use the built-in microphone in your laptop 
and the audio output will be at the same quality like a professional equipment and it costs nothing for you just some additional resources on the cpu and also we are seeing that more and more features are coming today with the help of large language models and this is a definitely a new trend and we would see uh, how uh, it will affect the market uh, besides the some uh, very very basic stuff like summarization when we have uh, very short uh, squeezed uh, text from every meeting but there could be more uh, done with large language models a lot more yeah, so you mentioned large language models. Uh, uh, are are you partnering with uh, any of those generative AI companies? And if so, uh, how did how do you go about deciding which one to integrate uh, into uh, your platform capabilities? Well, because of the nature of our business, we are not able to use cloud solutions, so our options are quite limited. So we are not able to, uh, you know ask our customers to upload their recordings uh, to the cloud of OpenAI, for example, for processing, that not secure from their point of view, and that's not the product we'd like them to have. So we're looking for our opportunities which can be uh, applied internally, and for that we have to ask our customers to have big investments into the hardware, because it is... Uh, impossible to upload to the cloud. So we have to ask the customers to prepare for us a dedicated machine with GPU or usually multiple GPUs, uh, let's say two or four GPUs uh, on which we can deploy a large language model to perform some typical tasks like summarization or some uh, search through uh, the content, tokenized content we create from the meetings, for example. And that could be a barrier for some customers. but Again, uh, today is 2024, maybe 2025, the new generation of uh, dedicated server CPUs, they would have narrow units, uh, which uh, could be built in, into the CPU and the dedicated GPU won't be required anymore. So I would say that uh, for on-prem collaboration, the server side AI features, are, let's say one year behind uh, of the cloud-based competition, but right. we already have the same features of the same quality, like some basic things like uh, summarization, it's already here. So uh, we could create a short memo for every meeting, who participated, who missed the meeting, what decisions were made, who was assigned with which, which tasks, and who is responsible for those tasks, and what deadlines were set, and what uh, time is the next time we have to meet. So some, some useful information, which is much better than to ask uh, people who missed the meeting to review the recording, nobody doing that, and nobody actually reading through the recognized text from the meeting. It's also a lot of information. So it's memo is the first useful thing for large language models, but there could be more uh, done with them. And we're yeah. investigating those, those opportunities. Yeah, so uh, summarization is already there. What other uh, types of features that are AI-infused applications should we be looking for on the near-term roadmap for tr from TrueConf? Uh, I think it's not limited to us. It's a general uh, possibility for every vendor. But uh, surprisingly, such on-prem installation, when the customer have the dedicated uh, machine for AI task, could bring even more features for the enterprise customers and medium-sized medium -sized customers, government customers, because many companies, they're really afraid to share any knowledges, uh, any information they have, any data with the cloud uh, services. There are many approaches how to uh, use large language models with internal data. It could be fine-tuning, fine RIG, and other things. But when we have the internal server, we don't have uh, limitations, what kind of data uh, we can use to train uh, and search through using the large language models because they stay internal. Uh, and that's, that's a big difference. So uh, in general, uh, we can prepare every type of content. Uh, to, we can tokenize everything, recording, chat messages, files, what's inside the files, some telemetry, who participated, what emotions they had. Uh, how they uh, performed, uh, what time they joined the meeting. So a lot of data could be used uh, with internal large language models to output a much smarter, uh, more efficient and more useful results, uh, which, believe me, very few companies will be okay to send to the cloud. 
So in some ways, you're saying that AI uh, on done on premises is uh, maybe even better than AI in the cloud. Uh, are you are you trying to make that case? Yeah, absolutely. It will be uh, because it it's almost impossible to you know to uh, create private cloud based large language model because you never know what part of your data will be used for training, and you shouldn't be sure that this information won't appear uh, for someone else's results. It could. And the only way to uh, absolutely secure the data is uh, to make sure it never leaves your network. And for that, uh, the local large language model could be used. And I we are seeing that there are more and more models appear every half a year. And we are not limited to Facebook's models like meta models. Then other developers, uh, we also have very strong IT companies and researchers in Russia. We also are in uh, collaboration with some Chinese companies, which also have very strong models. And there are many opportunities today. So there is uh, many options uh, to the cloud large language models for such implementations. Certainly, this market is changing very rapidly, so it's almost difficult to ask this question. But uh, look in the crystal ball three to five years from now, if you will. Uh, how much is uh, AI going to change what TrueConf uh, delivers from a video conferencing perspective? And how is it going to change the way people use video meetings in the workplace overall? I hope a lot will change. It will be changed by, with the help of AI. But uh, our predictions are usually... Uh, more optimistic than the reality. So we would see, uh, at least uh, we already have the thing which is quite useful, summarization. And I hope uh, that let's call it uh, intelligent search, uh, maybe smart search, AI-based search across a lot of internal data could also be, uh, could be done in the very near future. So for example, during the meeting, we can ask the assistant to process uh, a lot of tokenized information from external internal i'm sorry internal uh, data uh, it could be uh, the catalog of users uh, it could be some uh, enterprise resource uh, management systems with a lot of documents there it could be chat messages for specific project or team and we could ask that that assistant to uh, process that information for us uh, and we could receive immediately the uh, information we're looking for, uh, which is located outside of the conference. It is located outside of the minds of people who are talking. So I hope in the five years we would have uh, AI assistant for every meeting, which could be the best player in the team <laughs> in the meeting. <laughs> Well, uh, it's going to be fun to watch, uh, and it's uh, going to be interesting to watch TrueConf's progress uh, as AI becomes a bigger and bigger part of the video conferencing world moving forward. Lev, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thank you, Steve. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for this opportunity. And we thank you for taking time to watch today's episode. If you want more insight from industry thought leaders like Lev Yakupov from TrueConf, just click on the link right below there. Go to the Intelligent Video Today YouTube channel to subscribe and get notifications of future episodes of this interview series. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Underhar. Thanks for your time.